What up my freaks, Ruinous in sight here with part 6 of my Total War Warhammer 2 modded Arcan the Black Campaign. So as we saw last time, after the fall of Virus and pretty much the end of the Bretonians, save for their one uh, very hurt lord no. over here, uh, we are now poised to go after Xandri and start our war with Kemri in earnest, as well as hopefully take Bel Eliad for free. Uh, you can see the uh, second army that did suffer casualties, not last episode, but the episode before. Well, we did suffer one casualty last step. Uh, this guy's still waving his uh, sword around over here, but we will get this army shored up quite nice, and uh, then we'll attack Xandri. We also did manage to finally hit level 10 with Arcan the Black, which means the points were distributed, and we got Legion of Death, which means we do have a fair bit of a power up for uh, some of these vampiric units, and I love the fact that these are faction-wide, because it means that if our secondary or tertiary armies were to get uh, the Packs of Terror buff that buffs the uh, Dire Wolves and Felbats, which I don't intend to do on Arcan, because I feel it's a waste of points because I'm going to be going primarily Spirit Binders, uh, or the Spirit, uh, spirit Binders, uh, Ghost Units, Ethereal Units, then they will, the Packs of Terror will still have the full buffs on the other lords, and I absolutely love that. Uh, yeah, so, and I I also love the fact that the Caskets of Souls kind of fit with our, uh, with our whole ghost army thing, since they do shoot souls at people, or at least it looks like they do. Uh, Tormented Spirits, they're cl close enough. Close enough. Damned Souls, Tormented Spirits, whatever. Ectoplasm all over the battlefield. Uh, somewhere Slanesh is just it's just having a grand old time. Now, anyway, I believe I've done everything between the episodes that needs to be done, so we can proceed to the next turn. We do have to keep an eye out, however, on our public order, as in several provinces, it's quite in a bad way. Uh, Lashik, in fact, I think, despite the fact that you're making a decent amount of cash, we might have to just untax you, uh, because there's no way we're going to be able to do anything about this stuff, because it'll be a long, long time before we can... Uh, before we can take these dwarves, probably. I mean, or at least before we attack them. We can probably take them right now, but I'm not gonna peace out with Cetron. I don't think he's willing to talk anymore. Anyway. Yeah, he, he don't want to. And he probably never will. So anyway, let's end the turn. Let's kill this one lord. Let's see if Cetra's army magically appears. We also really need to get Arkan another level just to get the buff for the... Uh, increase of the agents that we have we really need a few just to scout out the line because we're operating pretty much blind out here and i really really don't appreciate that all right what do we have here a lost tomb hidden knowledge well we're obviously going to dig elsewhere because that's a lot of cash but let's see what this says during the excavation of one of our lord's tombs a disaster occurred the more we dug the more sand poured into the breach trapping our unfortunate workers inside and resealing the chamber is the loss of a few wretched laborers sufficient reason to dig elsewhere or should we person here and we double our efforts. 40 canopic jars would have been better late game, but early game we really need the money, so dig elsewhere. Go ahead. Ancient Lich Priests. Quests. Successfully carry out a hero action. Well, that would be swell. Ooh. I'm gonna read this. The Black Pyramid, Nagash's greatest legacy, is a construction of pure malevolent power. Construction. <laughs> Construct. Though eternally loyal to his master, Arkan would slay a legion to wield even just a little of it. If he can lay his hands on the staff of Nagash, a fraction will be his to command. No record exists of the staff's whereabouts, but a tool of such arcane eminence does not pass through the world without trace. Arkan summons his agents. He orders them forth to hunt high and low for word of the staff. He bids them to be discreet, to cloak their hunt beneath the guise of everyday activity. None must know of Arkan the Black's design. I'm pretty sure everybody just assumes that it's some horrible design. Would do uh, wants to stop it anyway. So we got so we got the quests for both of these things. Uh, wait, did I not read this? Uh, I don't remember if I read. I'm just gonna read it right now. The Cameron warrior king Alcadazar has dominated Arkan's thoughts of late. How could he, a mere mortal, resist Nagash's power and slay him? Uh, well, he had the, the blade, but yeah, sure. Uh, what a resilient soul the man must have had. To bind such a soul into his tomb blade, the Lich King reasons would amplify its power magnificently. Oh, I did read this. Thing. Uh, but to perform such a right, Alcatazar's remains will be required. Yeah, we read this last time. Okay, so we're good there, but we can't move anybody to Black Tower of Arcan until we get a hero, which we also can't do the second mission with, so we can just go ahead and ignore that. Uh, you, secondary army. Wait, first of all, I think we're going to send Arkan to 
Al Haik, or at least very, very near to Al Haik. You are not him. We could let it rebel and farm it for XP. Uh, let's see, this guy's unfortunately not somebody we're gonna catch. But I want to head you down to Bel Aliad and then we'll move to Zen. Oh, he's just here. Okay, goodbye. Damn, I could have given this XP to Arcad, I guess. Well, it's too late now. You get a free level, I guess. And he did indeed level up. And there we go. Thigan's entry destroyed. We will not be seeing them again. Probably will never be seeing the Bretonians on our shores. So, uh, hey, there's that. All right, so let's get the Arrows of Asaf. Let us, well, we don't need Root Nurture again. I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do with regards to these things yet in this particular army. Because, I mean, we went for Arrows of Asaf, so we're clearly going to get Screaming Skull Catapults in here and uh, some other stuff just to benefit from this. Oh, we could go for Martial Discipline. Oh, Martial Discipline also can level up Direwolves and Felbats. Yeah, you can definitely get a lot of upgrades for that. Huh. That would mean we need to basically spec this guy into uh into direwolves and fell bats mm. i mean it's not a horrible option it's definitely not a horrible option i'm just i'm just checking these upgrades to see if there's another one that will upgrade ah there's another one disciple of well well yes so we could just straight up make this guy a uh Direwolf and Felbat Carrier. This would mean the Arrows of Asaf is a little bit wasted, but if he's a support army, it's not horrible. And it's not like any of these upgrade the und or the uh, Vampire Count units anyway. So this is all useless to them. You know what? I like that idea. Let's go Martial Discipline. Direwolves and Felbats. We're going to get them more into this army. We're going to go straight into uh, Packs of Terror as well. And then we're going to go Disciple of Uwat as soon as we hit rank 10. Let me get some Karen in here as well. As long as we don't run into Skaven with a Howling Warp Gale that could just destroy that, I think we'll be okay. Uh, Arcan the Black, I think you can move a little bit closer to Xandri. Let's see if uh, if Camry has their army over there. They have a stack somewhere. We just I just have no idea where it is. All right, you, keep moving. Legions. You need to head to Bel Eliad. Let's get you one more skeleton spear. Honestly, I'm kind of tempted to just straight up replace these uh, warriors with spears while we're at it. Because we need more line holders than damage dealers here. There we go. I just convinced myself and did it. Uh, let's see what else we have here. We could wait to upgrade Al Haik to level 3, or we could upgrade Firesen Kofor to okay, level. Hmm. Kofor is a port. And the thing is, we're going to get a lot of extra money out of Kofor Harbor, so I think we got to go upgrade Kofor first, and then we'll work on the rest next. That does take a lot of our cash. So we need to we need to spend money. We need to spend money to make money. The, the old adage definitely stands true, or rings true, whatever. Well, let's end that turn and proceed to Lakwa. Don't you dare declare war on us, Tic Tac. Don't you do it. You want a non-aggression pact right now. Uh, I'd be perfectly willing to betray you later. You're fighting the Rock Hop Dynasty. Okay, you're fairly weak. How many... I mean, they're willing to give us money and a non-aggression pack, which we can just cancel. Do I want to fight Tic-Tac-Toe right now? Hmm. I think he has two provinces. Al-Kalabad is not his capital. Uh, I guess he has another province down here, or is it this one that's that's the capital here? I don't know. But it would be nice not to have to deal with any of these factions for now. We'll deal with them later, absolutely. But yeah, sure. Not aggression pact. I'll take it. I guess they're afraid of our two armies. As soon as we get a third... Ah, ah, what are we doing here? What are you doing, Cetra? You acting highly suspicious again. Blue Vipers. Where in the hell are the Blue Vipers? They will offer to join the... Where are these guys? Aren't the blue vipers in the jungles over here? How did they even see Cetra? It's very bizarre. Now, I think I'm not going to do this. And the reason for that is that I believe, if I'm correct, these guys are in the jungles over here. A lot of other factions are going to dislike us making any kind of deal with them, especially the lizardmen over there. So let's just decline this for now. 
Alrighty, looking good. Corrupting more areas. You, uh, we probably don't need the regenerative power anymore. We can switch that to something else. Now, we can't hit Xandri from here. The only question is, what else is over there? Alright, let's, let's move a wee bit forward along the road here. Aha, we have... Ah, they got a tomb bark. Nice. Nice. So I take it we can't get these because we're Arcan. I believe somebody in the comments noted something about them not being able to recruit these. Uh, but I also don't remember what building would allow us to get this unit. I don't see the picture of the tomb bark anywhere. I, I personally just assume that because we get the mortis engine, we don't get the tomb bark. Hmm. I mean, it's it's an it's an aura carrier, so it essentially fulfills the uh, the same role. What aura does it have? Hieroglyphs of protection, affects as and range, ten percent damage resistance, and Kepra beetles. I assume that's the point of it, and that's why we can't get it. But I don't see why we wouldn't be able to get the this particular unit either. What? Either way, I'm pretty sure we can attack Xandri. Now, they do have some nicer units in here, uh, so I fear that we will have to get... We'll have to get our reinforcing army in on this instead of heading to Bel Aliad. I hope that won't mean that tic tac is going to take it for free, because I really wanted those golden idols. But at this point, Xandri is just outright more important. Your dynasty does indeed reign supreme. Alright, let's just go over here. We probably won't need this many units, but can Arkan do this himself? I mean, he can. He absolutely can. The thing there is he can do it with too many casualties. I don't want him to suffer so many casualties that he has to sit in Xandri for several turns. I want him to be able to uh, proceed and do whatever whatever needs doing down at Camry. While it's still not too powerful to... Oh, are you... please tell me you're close enough. I swear. Alright, move it on in. We can't take a stance because we are uh, too far. And do you get support? Yes, indeed you do. And, oh, it says that they have better chance. I mean, yes, they do have some Tomb Guard in here. They have four Lords. And the Tomb Bark definitely have some nice units. But I think we're going to be just fine over here. We have a massive amount of range superiority with two artillery pieces and a ton of skeleton archers. Just an absolute ton of them. We got nine and thirteen. I mean, the range firepower is nice. And plus, they're, oh, they actually have a fair few amount of range units themselves, which is actually a good thing for us because they can... Uh, uh, we have the uh, doggos and stuff to take care of them. They also have a special legion, Xandri's Black Shields. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be curious to see what these guys look like on the field. Oh, and they have a special aura as well. Bolstered defense for allies nearby. Do our guys have a special aura? No. Disappointing. Why do we get the 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 one without the special aura? Oh well. Well, regardless, here goes cinematic battle time. Alrighty, here we go. The battle for Xandri. Uh, this basically allows us to attack Camry from here. It's essentially a base, or at least that's the way I've been imagining it. Now, there is definitely a choice to be made right away in this particular battle. The enemy is moving through a choke point, so we could either rush our main force towards it, which is clearly what I ended up deciding, or we could sit back, wait for our second army to come on in, so that we can attack the enemy with double the army. Which is the better choice? I guess you guys will have to be the judge of that by the end of the battle. Now, I do start off by sending the tomb scorpion in alone and the main reason for that is just to slightly distract the enemy they already immediately start moving towards our army because they know that we have artillery which is going to come down it's going to start doing damage immediately i'm going to dance the scorpion around a little bit every single extra shot we get from that uh, from those two rather caskets of souls is going to be a lot more units killed and a lot more early damage the ushabti are already running at the enemy or at the enemy. <laughs> Looking from the enemy's perspective, I guess. 
Alrighty, so here we go. The Ushapti and these, uh, what are these? Uh, Nehekarn Riders? Horsemen. Close enough. Uh, they're all going after the Scorpion, and the charge from both of them seems to have absolutely crippled its morale. It almost came close to routing, and it's got into a weak binding just from that attack in the rear. Very, uh, very disappointing. I don't think it would have routed off the field immediately, but I, if we had left it there to get surrounded, I certainly would have been worried about it. So, yeah, now our main army is going to move up. We'll have the uh, Whites of Stormwrath Tarn, Tarn leading the center, charging into the Ushapti slash the, uh, slash the Horsemen. I keep wanting to uh, call them Riders, but uh, Riders on the Storm. All right, uh, there we go. I love watching, I love watching the uh, Stone Cat, or Stone the uh, soul caskets of firing so this is going to be the opener but there is something bad that happened over here a charge from the skeleton chariots into our crypt pools that's off of one single charge they lost half their hp plus they got hit with the spirit leech after that i mean that's pretty darn bad i don't want to lose a unit of crypt pools immediately so as soon as i notice this i do try to get them to disengage they don't do a lot of damage to the chariots it seems because they uh they sit here for a while and uh, not a lot comes of it Ooh, and take a look at this tomb bark i think this was a separate mod that was uh eventually integrated into the into sfo i think i don't quite recall but i do vaguely remember when this unit was it's not a vanilla unit is it or maybe it is i don't know uh mod and non-mod is just confused is i'm just confused between the two at this point I'm just so used to SFO, but it's still a pretty cool unit. I like it. I could have made boats with it. Game. Uh, alrighty, so here we go. Starting to summon undead, mostly to get in the way of the main uh, portion of the enemy units, i.e. the central host, so that they don't charge anybody else. We have these guys. The Ushapti decided to actually disengage for some reason. Not entirely sure why they did that, and so did the chariots, actually. This does allow us to disengage our own quick tools over here, and I do... Uh, there they go, there they go, all the chariots. Uh, yeah, because these guys, they're already in critical binding, or crumbling, and rat- well, they're, they're not routing, but they're crumbling, and I definitely don't like that, but this battle, I mean, this, this turned out to be a pretty damn epic battle with a lot of, uh, different things going on, a lot of, uh, charging, and once again, since because we, we have mostly basic units, and no crazy units that would absolutely destroy the enemy, it does last quite a while, which does make all these early game battles quite nice. Ah, uh, tar pitting regular undead, love you. Oh, and look at these Ushati, they're just going after the scorpion over and over again. I think the AI, smartly enough, knows... Oh, the scorpion actually managed to kill Chariot. Nice. I think the AI knows that the Ushati are pretty much the only thing they have on the field that have a chance of downing the scorpion, but uh, that really won't happen without uh, straight-up focus firing them. And I love how these Tomb Guard actually... Or Tomb Guard. Uh... I still don't remember what to call them, because they're skeleton warriors, but they look like they look like Crypt Guard. These guys don't have Crypt Guard, or Grave Guard, rather. I, I, some kind of guard, okay? <laughs> but good enough. And there we go. Arcan is in the middle of the fray as well. We got our Realm of Souls popping. We also have our Doggos coming in right... Oh, damn, I missed the charge. That's a little bit disappointing. I sent all of the doggos. They did get stuck here on the river for a second. I was worried that the chariots would charge them, but they did manage to run past them. And then basically find all the enemy range units. So Skeleton Archers, X4, we charge them with all of our X5, X6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 is it? Is it 5 or 6? Doesn't matter. Some amount of skeleton archers were charged here. Most of them will be dead very, very quickly because they have no chance in uh, fighting against the doggos. Plus, we also have the flock of job and the uh, fell bats in here. Skeleton archers are dropping like uh, flies or like locusts or like scarabs, the flying ones. Uh, there we go. Alrighty, and what do we have here? These guys, 46, 45, yeah, they're also dropping. I'm a little bit wary about uh, missing out on the main battle to watch archers get killed because it's not too interesting. 
But I do like the uh, I do like the flyers and the uh, mixed type of units that we have going on. Anyway, let's take a quick look at well, not so quick a look at the main battle. Uh, this flank is probably where we're doing the worst right now because I guess it's because of these horsemen. I'm not entirely sure. They do have a Nehakara warriors unit as well as a skeleton uh, regular skeleton warriors unit. And I, maybe it's because of that original Crypt Pool unit that got wrecked and then ran away, because this second one is also now getting wrecked, and the enemy is just having a very decent time. They have their own Realm of Souls going right now, and... Yeah, I'm, I'm really starting to dislike how the entire map basically glow, glows green because of this. Because it's really hard to see what the hell's going on. Like, where the hell is Arcan in this press? I just genuinely can't tell. There we go. Oh, yeah, he's been fighting the Tomb Prince, hasn't he? Uh, yes, okay. At least there was a duel in, in the middle of all this. And, uh, spoilers, Arken is going to absolutely obliterate this guy. I think I managed to use a Spirit Leech on him, and that was more than enough to get him uh, low HP, and he is basically dead now. Oh, did Arken turn away at the last second? Turned out the Killing Blow, man, instead of letting, instead of letting him uh, crumble to death. Oh, well. Maybe that was an insult to injury thing. There we go. So the Whites of Stone Wrath Tarn, despite charging some of the best units that the enemy had, they're completely full HP, strong binding. Uh, they're fading in terms of their vigor, but uh, still quite nice. We also have this flank where a lot of stuff is clearly going on, but it's blinding. I have absolutely no idea what the hell is happening. The enemy's crumbling, but we also have Realm of Souls going. Uh, basically, there were a bunch of enemy units that got that were being held. I think there were three or four four, like four total enemy units held by a pair of our Crypt Ghouls. At the end of the day, the Crypt Ghouls held them long enough for our secondary army to approach and then uh, start pelting the enemy with arrows and just obliterate them. And I think that's just about it for this battle. Yeah, look at, look at all these uh, all these skeletons. Oh, did they have a Tomb Guard unit here? Was this why they weren't going down? Are these skeleton spears I ate? Well, I couldn't tell. They looked like they had fancier shields and gold work there, yeah. Alrighty, and I believe that is it. Everybody has crumbled to death. At the end, there were a couple heroes left, and they were just surrounded by the doggos, and then they crumbled to death with our own uh, summon of Ushabti on top of them. I kind of missed that, but it was kind of uh, boring with basically... Just being surrounded by dogs, you can really see anything. But hey, there we go, victorious in Xandri, and that's another army plus a garrison. And then we are on the road to Camry next. Alrighty, another decisive victory, and I gotta say, it was pretty decisive at 300 units lost for the 2,000 of the enemy. Now, we did obviously have a choice to make in that particular fight, as uh, we could have just stood back and waited and uh, had two armies at once, but I felt that since the enemy was bunched up, I had to get those extra few shots in there and uh, try to damage their army before they uh, spread out across across the map. Did that in the end yeah, make us take more casual casualties? I'm not sure, but it certainly worked out in the end. I gotta give the MVPs of that particular round to the doggos. Yes, they got stuck a couple times for some reason near the river there, but they absolutely cleaned house in terms of destroying all of those range units and then pinning down all the enemy lords and heroes together. And I, I think except one Tomb Prince. The Tomb Prince was killed by Arcan, whereas uh, the Doggos killed all the other ones. And that was really nice, because I would have expected them to take a lot more damage. For the enemies, the Chariots. That single Chariot charge almost obliterated one of our units of Crypt Ghouls. So uh, we definitely have to watch out for those, especially as, they get, as the enemy gets more Chariots. I really, really don't want to fight Sirtha Ek, is what I'm saying. Anyway, that's that for that battle. We will take Xandri. Oh, that's a nice amount of uh, a nice amount of value here. But I guess we could keep it at level two, which would be nice. Uh, ooh, a Tormentor sword. Yes, melee attack and cannot move. I like that. I guess we got to give that to Arcan until he can get his. Uh... Oh man, or do we give it? Do we give it to the priest? Maybe. 
uh, the spellcaster because it will allow him to get away if he gets stuck by something. Just spam that uh, tormentor sword. On the other hand, it is a massive melee debuff, and this guy's usually not in the melee press, despite the fact that I keep getting him nearly killed. Ugh, regardless, I'll, I'll do that in a second. We definitely need this. Two more Lich Priests. Here. Thank you. We need heroes. In fact, can we get one from here immediately? Yes, we can. Alright, we got a Trent. Oh. Well, I guess the first one's going to be an agent. Ooh, wow. This guy has plus five for two scorpions. Well, I kind of like that. And he's a li priest of light, though. Wait. No, it's a priest of death. Useful, but not in... Uh... But not in Arkham's army. What else do we have here? Tough, Master of Ceremony, Untainted Local Province. The rest of these are kind of useless. I guess Cunning might help our provinces, but I don't imagine we'll be using Ambush too much. More so to hide from the enemy than anything else. We can just take this wise guy. Two free Canopic Jars. Yeah, I guess this. If this is going to be an agent, we might as well take the wise guy. Tell the Thor the wise guy. Alright. Uh, I wish you had started at a higher level. Hopefully you don't get instantly assassinated because that would make me real salt. I uh, guess we gotta go specialist first. What, what, do you, what can you even do as an agent? You can damage buildings, so I guess breaking walls, and you can wound people but not kill them. Uh, hinder replenishment is trash. Honestly, you're not that good as an agent. I guess we need somebody to damage buildings and generate freaking epic jars. Hmm, this almost feels like a waste of a priest. But oh well, I guess we need at least one as an agent. I feel the Necrotechs are more useful in the armies. And again, these guys are pretty useful. The day oh. of awakening comes. Regardless, let's take a look at Cambrai. Uh, it's over here. It is level I can't tell. <laughs> it's actually quite a trek from Zandri. I don't like how far it is. Because it'll mean going further. Well, foes. you're gonna go over there, and then you're gonna go straight down through the Black Pyramid into the uh, Black Tower of Arkan, which should be somewhere around here. Graphically, it should be down here, shouldn't it? There it is. It's right here. Okay. You go past Camry, and then down to the Black Tower. So that makes sense to me. Uh, there's a bunch of levels, but I'm... I'm yeah, I'm going to do that between the episodes. Just, just took a quick look at the time there, and uh, there's not much of it left. Now, we do have another Crypt Barracks over here. We could destroy it, because we do have a landmark here. Aha! The Zandri Black Shields. We can, indeed, build them from here, so that's nice. The question is, how many of these can we build? Uh, what's the limit of these? Unit capacity plus one of Tomb Guard. Capacity for all heroes. Unlocks recruitment of Zandri Black Shields. How many of them can we build? Occupied Fleet Port of Terror unlocks technologies. What is this? Diplomatic relations with vampire counts. Oh. Oh, yes. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, this is this is really going to work for us. More trades with all the vamps. Presuming that they don't die, usually the OG vampire counts survive fairly long into the game, so I'm not all that worried about them. Uh... Yeah, we have to get rid of this. The only thing is, we can build... It's a level 2 as well. Freaking hell. We can get some ne Nehekar warriors in there. We can replace two of these shield units. Oh, you're in March stance, so you can't do it right now anyway. Damn. So I guess we just gotta get rid of it. Screw it. It's nice, but there's a lot nicer stuff to build here. Oh, wait. Does Xandri have to be level 3 to build that? I should have checked that. Anyway. Yes, it does. So that means we keep this around. We could replace it with a Desert Lookout immediately, but frankly, if somebody attacks it while it's level 2, there's no way it's going to hold anyway. We could also go for the Potter's Hut, but I feel like this is going to be more useful here temporarily, especially if we lose the place. Okay, anyway. Anyway, oh, Telethor does start at level 3. I thought he started level 1. We should, we should be okay. Okay. And what else do we have to do this particular turn? I still want to get you down here, but we can't see Cetra, and this is quite a trek as well. And you have to trek back here, and Cetra will probably have an another full stack by the time you get there. Hmm. It's unfortunate. And let's see, unassigned skill points. Yeah, 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 we'll do that later. Unless they attack us right now, I don't think so. I think we're okay. 
Oh yeah, this place this place is gonna get us rebellion. Al Haik won't be able to defend itself either. You know what? We're gonna have to switch to Worship of Asaf, public order. Definitely gonna need that right now. Not gonna build any more of these crypt barracks here. At least not right now. I'm almost tempted to replace them, even though that uh, decreases the amount of uh, skeleton archers available to us. But there is some stuff that we can get here. Like Kofor, we get spices, which is more money. You know, let's get rid of the one in Kofor. I just really hope somebody doesn't attack it from the sea. Anyway, I will end this turn now. And obviously we're running out of time. Camry, war declared against the Sentinels. Okay, well the AI appears to continue in its insanity. If they attack the Sentinels, who always have like five stacks around the uh, around the Black Pyramid, that'd be just so... Oh, come on, we did not need a negative growth right now. Fortunately, it's in Martek, so it's probably the best place that we could possibly get it at. Uh, the public order is rising here. I feel like we just let it rise up for a little while, just for the extra cash. We definitely got a lot to spend it on. Let's get those spices and... Oh, doesn't actually give us any extra money. I thought it would give us a small amount of cash. That's a shame. We'll do it anyway. And Hero, let us march you forward right here. Hopefully you'll be close enough to be able to see what's going on here. We do have this freaking marsh to go through. There is a bridge over here, though. And oh, so we got Setra, another stack on the way, and this level three, and then the garrison, three Screaming Skull Catapults, three Ushapti, no Kemrian War Sphinxes. But I don't think we can take this yet. We can't take it unless we cripple... Oh, this guy is here. I swear I could have I could have sworn the Blue Vipers were there, but I, I guess it's somebody else. Huh, weird. He probably will accept if we ask him to war against Cetra again. That might be very, very, very useful. Oh wow, what the hell? These guys actually managed to take a bunch of the Badlands. Numas. Is Numas down here? Is Numas more powerful than, uh, than what's it called? Than Camry? How did that happen? I swear it was over here somewhere. Is that crazy? It's not here, it should be like right beside, uh, be right beside Queek. This is Qatar, or... There it is, okay. <laughs> it's been a while since I played the, uh, since I played the Tomb Kings, or had a campaign that took, that took these territories, so... Geography is still a little bit foggy to me. Anyway, I believe that's another turn that we just straight up end. Arkin can just start marching. Uh, we might... I mean, yeah, I'm gonna start marching this way. Down so that we could stop on by to Bel Aliad if we feel like it. Al Haik is now gaining public order, so we're good there. King Kura, you follow along right here. They can't reach us. There we go. Now you are actually going to combine these units. Get rid of one. Get a pair of Nehekar warriors. There we go, much better. Get a few more archers, but I think we're okay. And yeah, I know I was saying that this guy needs more line holders, but we might as well get a couple of extra better units. Unfortunately, I don't believe we're going to have time for another battle this episode, but that, that one was pretty okay in my opinion. Uh, I will ignore the assigned points once again. Because I'll save that for next episode, just in case there's somebody who's secretly nearby and is willing to fight. So the thing that I'm thinking with this is if we wait one turn... Ah, but what if he moves away? Is this the best time? If we make him go into war, he might raid... Yes. You know what, let's try it. Join war against Camry. Success low. We will offer you... Ah, oh, damn, I should have taken it. I should have taken it. What the hell do you want? Non-aggression pack. Join war against Camry. Low again. Damn. I should have taken it. Why did I think he was near the lizards? Ah, disappointing. And I don't think anybody else nearby is going to be willing to distract Camry for us. Maybe what we can do is am try to set Arkan in an ambush right here. And then set Kinkura outside here and try to get... Uh, try to force Setra into attacking us. And then take Camry. 
That's probably going to be the goal of next episode, but we're just about out of time here. I'm going to end one more turn, and if nothing comes of it, we will, uh, we're going to call this. Uh, they're going to try to assault Garrison and Zandri. That's fine. I don't think they're going to take it. You just try to wound our hero. Now, that's going to start getting annoying sooner rather than later. Uh, we might spec our agent to, to wound might be necessary. Hello, what do we have here? Hero action cost plus 40. Enemy hero action success chance. Oh, no, I'll take the action cost. We don't want enemies uh, getting extra chance. Okay, Lich Priest should live only to serve their king's undying will. Betrayal should be anathema to their order. Yet one among their number has betrayed us by conspiring with a rival tomb king. How should we proceed? Wait, wasn't... Uh, conspiring with a rival tomb king. Isn't everybody a rival Tomb King to Arkin? <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> uh, bury him, yeah. Now you. We're gonna spec you into Wound. Right there. I guess Specialist as well. We just straight up put three points into Specialist. I would have loved to get more Canopic Jars, but we need this sooner rather than later. Do it. Do it, and then try to get rid of this guy. We got a 70% chance and a 16% chance... For failure, 60% to wounded, but no, we will level up off of this one. Like, but so will he. We will need you to break down the walls of Camry if we actually manage to make it this far. Damn. Golden Host of Mahrak. Wait, why would the Golden Host of Mahrak be recruitable from Camry and not Mahrak? Uh. Oh, well, whatever. It doesn't matter. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. We can't... I guess we could try this. I I don't think these guys are ready to attack us. That's the problem. So even if we try this uh, Arcan ambush I'm planning, I don't think it'll work yet. What's the uh, ambush chance? It's at 25%. So right here. Please tell me that was enough. Yes. What's your chance of ambushing here, by the way? It's like 40? Yeah, it's... Well... Well, here goes. This is just the setup for next episode, because I, I really doubt that this is going to happen. Cetra's army is probably too weak to attack this one. I would imagine it is. Even with these guys helping them out. But if he falls for it, it'll be absolutely beautiful. We could draw them out into a field battle, but I don't think we can win against three Screaming Skullpa Catapults and three Ushabti. And plus five, six units of Tomb Guard. Yeah, unless we take care of both of these armies, there's no way. I don't want to be here for no reason, either. That's that's also a problem. We've we've made it all this way. We can't, uh, we can't turn back. It would be too much of a waste of time. Anyway, anyway, that's it for the setup. I'm going to assign the rest of the skill points over uh, between the episodes. And if anything there is interesting, I'll tell you guys about it. Uh, let's see, we will probably need to upgrade the sandstone walls here, but I think we're okay right now, I don't want to spend the cash, and other than that, there's not much that's going to be going on between the episodes, so next time we will start off with, hopefully, baiting Cetra into an ambush, and then, if it works, uh, trying to siege Camry, maybe starve them out, in so far as you can starve a Tomb King out, in fact, Tomb King should probably be immune to being besieged, right? Why would they start suffering attrition from a siege? I guess if you had a lot of artillery, but... Mm, it's not from the starvation. Nonetheless, we also still have this fresh transcripts power for five turns. We need to make use of it while we can. If we were to, if we were to take Henry so early, it would be amazing. And then we'd be, we'd be really well poised to just take all of this territory with Camry as our home base or go straight for Numas after. We know that Numas will declare war on us. But Camry can essentially act as a bastion and hold off their armies. Zandri, not so much. We'll probably need to put a guardian army in Zandri to permanently guard it. But otherwise, let's, uh, let's call this here. Stay tuned for uh, hopefully the Battle of Camry and next time. So with that said, as always, I do appreciate any and all feedback with regards to the gameplay or the way I do things on this channel. If you have a second, please do take it to leave a like and write comment to support the channel. It really, really does help. As always, I'm, ru I'm running out of breath. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.